I wanted to come back and take another look at the colours in your photographs because when it comes to editing, by far the most work you will do will be to adjust the colours, whether to adjust the contrast, i.e. the dark and light, the colour balance, like we're going to do here, or things like the saturation of the colours. Okay, first things first, let's get set up. Come to your magnifying glass and come to the little cog in the top left corner of the screen and zoom to fit. Nice big image, we can see what we're doing. Next thing, come over to our layers palette and come down to the cog at the bottom of it and click on duplicate layer. Remember, we never work on our original, always work on a copy. Often when I do these kind of tutorials, I say, well, make a folder and put all your adjusted images inside the folder. The fact of the matter is, for day-to-day -day work, I will normally make a duplicate of my background layer, make my changes to that, and then, if it's just colour work, flatten the image and save that out again, being sure I've kept the original image in another folder. OK, here's our picture. You can probably tell what's wrong with it. It was taken indoors, and it was taken without a flash, and also it was taken with the standard kind of light bulb you'll get in most rooms, in most houses. So the skin tones have got a very yellowy orange cast to them. We need to try and fix that. Before we do, though, we need to correct the overall brightness of the image, because, well, you'll see. If I come to Levels in my Effects Browser, Color Adjustments, drag it over. OK, what have I got? Well, looking at my little graph here, I can see that there's not enough light in there. So I'm going to drag my little slider over till it just connects with top part of that graph. It's not very clear to see in this image. And my overall brightness, maybe we could do with being just a little bit, tiny bit darker, not by much. OK, now what I've done with levels is I've made the brighter points brighter. Effectively, I've kept the darker points where they are, but by moving this slider along, what was kind of a lightish kind of grey, orange, whatever, is now much brighter. Well, that much brighter. Click on OK. And let's compare that. Original image, new image. That may not come up very well on the video that you're watching, but already you're getting a slight difference in the colour balance just by adjusting the brightness. So adjust your brightness levels before you start to do the colour balance. OK, just very quickly, before we do this properly, I'm going to show you what colour balance does. So come down to Effects Browser, Colour Adjustments, Colour Balance, pick it up, drop it in. What have you got? You've got three sliders here which control whether the image gets more reddish or more cyan, which is kind of a greeny blue whether it gets more green or whether it gets more magenta, which is kind of a pinkish color, or whether it becomes more yellow or blue. And you can control it in the midtones of the picture, the shadows of the picture, and the highlights of the picture. The problem you've got is because the overall picture is very yellowish, you don't know by how much. It would be nice to have, for example, a color white in the picture, which you could compare it to, to see how you're getting on. Now, with some other programs which cost 10 times the price, which I won't name here, you can select kind of white levels and what have you. There's various different tricks you can do. As far as I know with Pixelmate, you can't. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to cancel this. Then I'm going to come to the Shapes tool. I'm going to click Rectangle Shape, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle here, about there. I'm going to make it a gradient. That's good. And I want it to go from black to white. And also, I want to get rid of that little outline there. If I just lay that over the image, I can make it invisible at any point, And when I finish with it, I can throw it away. But for now, I've got that to compare my skin tones with. Now, the skin color isn't white or gray or whatever, but it does give me some kind of reference to base my changes upon. If I made it purely white, I can almost guarantee you would end up with a picture that was too light in color because you'd be trying to match to that. No, what you want is a box which goes from white down to black with various shades of gray in between, just to give yourself a decent reference point. OK, so now make sure you've got the background layer copy selected. Come to Color Balance, drop it in, see what we've got. All right, so which one do you do first? Shadows, midtones, or highlights? Now, conventional wisdom says use 
mid-tones. Do the mid-tones which will control the overall balance of the picture and then tweak the shadows and the highlights to match. Sometimes though you will find that especially the shadows may adjust the overall cast of the picture more so than the mid-tones in which case fine start with the shadows first. But for now we're going to go with mid-tones. By the time you finish with this you'll have moved just slight amounts just say for example there I've got minus 8% there and 12% there and nothing on the middle one. Just reset that now. But you want to see what these sliders actually do. There's no point kind of creeping around with tiny little changes. Go on, swing it around. There you go. See what it's actually going to do to the picture. Wow. You can see huge changes there. So I said I wanted less yellow in the picture. Well, that gives the less yellow. What about adjusting the top one? See, the top one is giving me closer to what I want, a slightly more natural color, but not that much, obviously. And what about the magenta and green? Well, definitely no no green in there. That was looking terrible. Now I've swung these sliders around a bit. I've got a bit more of an idea of what I want to do. Now, the most effective one was moving it towards cyan a little bit. And then I wanted a little bit more blue. And try a little bit of magenta. Already this is looking better. And I'm looking mainly at the skin tones. Always look at the skin tones. That's the most important point. But I'm also comparing them with our reference box. Okay, mid-tones, yeah, that's looking better. I like that. Shadows. Okay, I don't want to adjust too much because I'm looking at the hair of the one behind. As soon as I start adjusting that blue, everything's just getting blacked out there. So I'm going to be very wary about doing anything there. What about cyan? Maybe it's not making much of a difference. And there. Come back to mid-tones. If you notice, I've got... A bit of a line there. Generally speaking, maybe you should be aiming for that. Either a line there or a little bit of a curve going down one way or the other way. Depends. Let's take a look at the highlights. Now, do I want blue in there? Definitely no yellow. Quite a bit of blue in there. That's up to 27%. That's quite a lot of change. Now, cyan. A little bit more there. Again, I've got this, this diagonal line here. Well, a slight curve there, which that does happen quite a lot. You don't have to extreme stuff like that. Oh, that's looking nasty. Take it to about there. And let's click on OK with that. Let's hide our shape. Let's take a look at this compared to the original. So original, looking quite yellowy, greeny, orange. Yuck. New one. It's looking better. Now, is it worth me coming and taking a look at my levels once more? Do your overall brightness first, but don't be afraid to come back and take a look if you think. And maybe I'll, yes. Maybe I'll make the overall picture a little bit lighter. There. All right, just compare once more with the original. Was very yellow. Now, looking more natural. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.